watching 2 News Oklahoma Today. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. I'm Corey Duke here with meteorologist Michael Sager. So we were talking a lot of winter weather. So what's in store now? Yeah, we've got a quiet day for today. We're going to warm things up at the end of the week, and uh, we'll get more to this later in the newscast. But we may have some wintry weather on the way Ooh. going into early next week. But some nice weather to enjoy before we get to that point. OK, so let's check out that first forecast. Now, your 2 News Oklahoma first forecast, sponsored by Executive Homes. You'll notice some chill stepping outside this morning. A lot of us waking up here low to mid 20s, as warm as 28 degrees in Stigler. 23, though, in Oak Mulgee to about 26 currently in Tulsa. Some of these numbers may drop off just a little bit more by the time we get into sunrise. But a lot of us are a good 5 to 10 degrees colder compared to this time yesterday. In fact, about 13 degrees colder in Coffeyville and about 10 degrees colder uh, in Pryor. So you'll notice that change this morning. But thankfully, not a lot of wind, so the wind chill uh, not really uh, too far out of control this morning with those colder temperatures. Here's what it looks like now from Brookside. Looking actually to the south, you can see the Cityplex Towers there off into the distance, but great views here on the Wade's RV Weather Camera Network. We've got clear skies out there right now, but I do think we'll start to notice more clouds starting to roll in from the north and west. So we go through mid-morning, through midday, and through most of the afternoon, but by the end of the afternoon, some of those clouds will start to thin out just a little bit. Temperatures will be very similar to what we saw yesterday. Most of us probably low to mid-40s or so for those highs with a light west to northwest breeze, but overall looking good here for your Thursday. As we finish out the week, we are going to warm things up as mentioned, and we'll get a look at when we could see some wintry weather chances into next week here in about 15 minutes. Michael, thanks so much. Well, a viewer called us after she and several other drivers hit a deep pothole on the eastbound Broken Arrow Expressway. That was near 15th Street, and they popped their car tires. Nicole Klopp says she and at least four other drivers had to wait for help after their tires were blown out. Well, she tells us, of course, she's frustrated, but she's also worried about safety on the roads. Well, a couple people tried to stop and help me, and then while I was waiting, two other cars have pulled off with a flat, and somebody else has pulled off with an accident in the, from the same area. I, I mean, I, obviously our roads need some major work. I mean, four flat tires in the span of half an hour is not driver's fault. Well, Nicole says that she was on her way to work at a hospital NICU when she got the flat and was told it'd be at least 90 minutes before she got help. After viewers called us, we reached out to ODOT. The spokesperson told 2 News those potholes aren't the department's responsibility, saying the area is a work zone. And the contractor did repair potholes today after initial reports of flat tires, or I should say that was yesterday. So you'll want to be careful if you drive eastbound on the expressway near 15th. Watch out for the inside lane uh, this morning. Uh, we also reached out to the construction company in charge of that project, and we have not heard back. Now we go to the small community of Cyril, the community there, gathering to remember the four-year-old girl investigators say was murdered on Christmas Day. When it appeared Athena Brownfield went missing last month on January 10th, hundreds went searching, desperate to find her. But next week, authorities announced little Athena was never coming home. So last night, dozens came out to support a little girl that they had never met, wearing purple ribbons on their heart. Purple was Athena's favorite color. The same passion that moved their feet to walk now flooded their hearts and flooded their eyes with tears that began to stain the very soil that they were walking on. Well, court papers show Athena's caretaker, Alicia Adams, told investigators her husband, Ivan, killed the child and buried her body. Both are charged with child neglect. Ivan is charged with first degree murder. Four volunteer fire departments in Muskogee County are required to hand over all funds and county purchased inventory to county commissioners. This after commissioners meeting Monday where legal counsel said those departments are not in compliance with state statutes. Now, Mountain View, Brushy Mountain, Keefton and Buckhorn are the four listed as the Title 19 fire districts in Muskogee County. John Tyler Hammonds, the county attorney, says every purchase firefighters make with county funds needs to be properly filed, but it is not happening. Chief Clayton Webb with the Buckhorn Fire Department says his department isn't doing anything malicious. We want to make sure that the county's money, the taxpayers' money, is being spent for what it should be spent for. They are essentially destroying their county 19 fire departments because we can't function the way they want us to function. The four departments have 30 days to file all inventory and hand over funds. They'll also be audited by the state fire pension system and state auditor. 
Well, there's a big change coming to the way some Oklahomans feed their families. SNAP emergency allotments will expire nationwide in February. For nearly three years now, people who receive SNAP benefits have also been getting a little something extra above their normal amount. The emergency allotments or additional benefits, they normally arrive later in the month. While normal SNAP benefits are typically loaded onto an electronic benefits transfer card at the beginning of the month. Well, in fiscal year 2022, more than 408,000 families received SNAP benefits. The average benefit was 707 per person per day. Oklahomans are now encouraged to plan for benefits that they had before the pandemic. Oklahoma Department of Human Services, or DHS, says it wants to give families as much time as possible to prepare for the upcoming change in benefits. Well, covering the Capitol now, should the federal government take steps to increase their inspections of dog breeding facilities? Some animal rights advocates are pushing Congress to change current laws to make federal fines bigger and inspections more frequent. Two News Oklahoma's Joe St. George joins us from Washington with a look at the push to protect more dogs. And we want to warn you, some of these images, they may be tough to watch. Having a dog is, well, a lot. Yes, a lot of cleanups. Very humbling. And training. Sit. But a lot of fun. Good boy. Well, if you haven't caught on by now, this is my dog, Tucker, a golden retriever. And while my wife and I think we've given him a pretty good life, the reality is that not every dog is as lucky. And the question is, should our government be doing more? to protect dogs. For decades, we've had this problem. Ingrid Segerman certainly thinks so. She's a lobbyist with the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, or the ASPCA. Specifically, she wants Congress to compel the Department of Agriculture, which inspects dog breeding facilities, to inspect and fine breeders more for violations. They basically have this program of inaction. They're hardly ever issuing fines. We didn't just take her word for it. We looked at the public records, which you can too at U.S. USDA.gov. Last year, there were only 11 administrative actions by the agency involving breeders. And while some fines were issued, this one's for over 12 grand. Some were just warnings. This is just an official warning. The ASPCA says it would be nice to believe that more dogs are getting treated like Tucker in our country, and that's why violations are low. Sadly, she doesn't believe that. More fines are needed, she says, to keep more dogs happy. Minimal fines just don't work. It doesn't have a deterring effect. It doesn't actually deter that facility from violating the law again. And that's where the Goldies Act comes in. We want to warn you, these next images are tough to watch. The act is named after this unnamed, malnourished golden retriever in Iowa. It took 18 visits and six months for the owner of this facility to have his license suspended by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This precious pup eventually had to be put down. Goldie's Act would order the agency to inspect more and impose stronger penalties. A bipartisan coalition in Congress is expected to try and include it in this year's Farm Bill, legislation that happens every five years and often makes policy changes at the USDA. It would basically make the USDA do its job. As for the Department of Agriculture, we did reach out to them for an interview. They would only give us a statement that said in part that they take the welfare of animals very seriously and noted that they are already inspecting and fining animal owners after investigations. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Coming up next, we'll introduce you to the man behind the lens at Damon's Dronography to show you how he gets his stunning images. It's a story you'll see only on 2 News. Now, 2 News Oklahoma Sports. Hey, we had two of the NBA's best scores in a duel last night in OKC. Thunder hosting the Hawks. Shea Gilgis Alexander was cooking as he is wont to do. 13 of 22 shooting, 36 points. How about the nutmeg on that assist for Kenrich Williams? Thunder scored 43 in the first quarter. We were tied 77-77 at the break. Second half, though, Norman native Trey Young matching SGA point for point. Trey stops on a dime to bury that three. Later in the lane with a floater and one, 33 for Young. Jalen Williams was great down the stretch for OKC, 24 points, five dunks. OKC would cut the lead to one in the final seconds, but the Hawks hold on to win at 137-132 in entertaining ball game in OKC last night. And welcome into sports, everybody. Good morning to you. Undefeated at home, undefeated in conference play. Ori Hoops entering the stretch run, ready to finish off one of the great seasons in program history. Golden Eagles open a three-game homestand against Denver tonight. They are 17-4 this season, 8-0 in conference play. Earlier this week, received a vote in the AP poll for the first time in more than a decade. 
you know, we use the Muhammad Ali saying around here a lot, we run in the dark to dance in the lights. And it's a tribute to our players of all the work that gets done behind the scenes so that when they do get under the lights, they do get recognition for it. And it's nice to be recognized, but it, again, we can't put the prize in front of the work. They've done the work. Uh, we just got to continue to do the work in order to pursue the prize. Yeah, the moment not too big for these Golden Eagles. While we were out there getting interviews, the boys were having some fun in the background. Look at this. Carlos Jorgen's doing most of the work. His future's so bright. He's got to wear shades. Finally got Max Aismas to crack. When Coach Mills was out there, look at those shades. It was Kareem Thompson making some noise before quietly reading a book at the free throw line. Wow, Jorgen's is back there doing push-ups. They were having some fun with us. All right, TU Women's Hoops trying to knock off a nationally ranked team for the first time ever yesterday. Second place Golden Hurricane hosting first place South Florida. Sepulpa native Tamira Poindexter scoring a team high 17 points. Bixby's Maddie Biddle chips in with 14. This game was tied with just four minutes to go in the second quarter, 29 all. But the Bulls finish the half on a 14-4 run and they pull away in the second. USF solidifying its hold on first place, 89-68 the final. Tulsa Oilers face the Allen Americans in a three-game set this weekend. The first two in Texas, then Sunday afternoon, they are at the BOK Center. The two teams tied for last place in the Mountain Division right now with 31 points. Oilers taking one of three against the Utah Grizzlies last week. Jimmy Soper scored two goals in Saturday's 5-2 victory. By the way, the Oilers have now won four straight games played on Saturdays. How about that? Soper tied for the team lead in scoring with 28 points. Well, he was tied for the team lead. The Oilers trading Soper for Norfolk's tag Bertuzzi this week. Bertuzzi, bright future, 21 years old, scored 18 goals in 28 games for Norfolk. Tulsa also acquires forward Brennan Blasnick from Kalamazoo this week. The puck drops Sunday afternoon at 4.05. It's another Sunday family fun day. It's also the return of the popular Princesses and Puck Drop promotion. And that is this week's Tulsa Oilers Minute. And that is also all we have for morning sports this morning. Hope you have a great day, everybody. We'll send it back to the desk. Okay, and thanks so much. Well, every city has its unique attraction. You can see Tulsa every night in the backdrop behind me. But in fact, uh, that shot was taken by a man who turned a hobby into the pursuit of beauty. So Karen Larson wanted to meet the man behind the camera, and she shares his perspective with us in a story you'll see only on two. They are stunning images of Tulsa. The city's ordinary sights made extraordinary. Hopefully not too late. Not too late to capture the best light, the golden hours before and after sunset. With his camera drone and remote controller, he sees Tulsa in a whole new way. GPS, none of this stuff existed back in 2013. And you had to figure everything out. That's when Damon and his friend Brett Cunningham first started a new hobby, remote controlled cars and planes. The first thing that he tried to do was put a camera on the car so that he could drive under me while I was flying over. And that was a, a spectacular fail, <laughs> but it was fun to try nonetheless. Damon soon turned to drones and strapped on a camera to see what images he could capture. It was trial and error. So I was getting footage of all the flooding and everything else. Well, I was flying low and hit a power line and it dunked it into the creek. $1,200 gone. But it didn't take long for his talent to soar. My wife and I and his wife sat him down one day and had an intervention and said, you need to start posting this stuff instead of just hoarding them all to yourself. So he launched Damon's Dronography on Facebook. My whole goal was I just wanted to share cool sites. That, that's all it was. And when I started sharing them around, people just came out of the woodworks and started following my page. The state tourism department is now using his images. John Hope Franklin Reconciliation Park and even the cities of Tulsa and Sepulpa. There is no doubt Damon is an artist, though professionally, he's an engineer. He's a computer-aided drafter who designs very complicated systems and makes them simple to see. The same concept, he says, he applies to photography. Damon says he's fortunate his wife and his work support his passion. Well, they allowed me to run out. I just ran out of the office at 4 p.m. Because I saw rain, I saw light, I knew there's a rainbow somewhere and I just had to find it. And so I get the shot, I go back in the office and I show people and it's, so. Worth the time away from Oh that. yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's always the hunt. And when he's hunting for new views of Tulsa, his friend Brett is by his side, always watching the drone for potential danger. Whether it's a helicopter, a plane, a bird, 
uh, just keep an eyes out, make sure that there's nothing there that's going to take it out of the air or cause it to be a danger to someone else. You'll find them flying whenever they can steal away for an hour so Damon can seek out beauty in each moment. I just want to show people that, listen, there's, it's, there's beauty that's all around us and it just takes some time to find it sometimes, but it's always there. And these are just a few of the images he shot the night that uh, he met up with Karen Larson in West Tulsa using layered files and filters to capture the city in such a new way. So you can follow him on social media. It's Damon's Dronography. He's also produced a calendar and even given us some advice to share with our viewers on getting great pictures. All you have to do is look for this story on our website, kgrh.com. Oh, well, let's get on over to meteorologist Michael Sager. He's got a look at your weather forecast today. Hey, Michael. Yeah, we've got a good one for today, starting out a little bit on the chilly side this morning, but nothing too unusual for January standards as you're heading out the door. We're going to warm things up as we finish out the week. Definitely tomorrow we'll notice those milder temperatures into Saturday. And then a cold front comes in Saturday night. That's going to bring some chill back as we go into Sunday. And then with that cold air in place and a system moving in from the south and west, we potentially could be dealing with a wintry mix early next week. So that could be our next chance at some wintry weather and it could be impactful wintry weather at that. We'll be continue or we'll have to continue to fine tune that as we get a little bit closer. 60 degrees for Saturday if you've got any plans this weekend. Saturday by far going to be the most comfortable of the two days. It's a tale of two seasons. Cold front comes in Saturday night and that's going to drop temperatures with a gusty northerly wind on Sunday. So we'll have a mild south breeze on Saturday and a cold north breeze and a lot of clouds around on Sunday. And there might be a chance we get a shower or two to pop up Saturday evening, Saturday night and a very early Sunday morning as that front sweeps through. But even if we get a few showers uh, that pop up, I don't think it's going to be anything too heavy. Here's the view right now on a Wade's RV Weather Camera Network, I should say views, multiple views here around downtown, Owasso, uh, looking around South Tulsa. Everything's been good so far this morning. We've got clear skies right now, 26 degrees in Tulsa. Would not be surprised if that temperature drops just a little bit more here as we head towards sunrise. We are going to notice some clouds moving in from the north and west. The farther north and east you go, probably the better chance of seeing those clouds. But uh, don't be surprised if some clouds start to mix in as we go through, I'll oh, say, late morning, midday and into the afternoon hours. And then those will actually depart as we head through the overnight hours of tonight. We'll start out tomorrow morning temperatures into the 30s. And I think the model here probably a little too warm for tomorrow morning. I think we'll get a little cooler than what you're seeing here, probably near just below freezing for tomorrow morning. But we will get a nice boost in the temperatures tomorrow with highs well up into the 50s tomorrow afternoon. And then that 60 degree reading we just talked about on Saturday. Here's our opportunity for that wintry mix Monday and Tuesday and there's even a hint it could uh, linger a little bit in toward the middle or end of the week but right now at least the first half of the week uh, looking like uh, some better odds of getting some wintry weather into green country so we'll be monitoring that into next week. We'll break down what kids will need as they're heading out to the bus stop this morning in about 10 minutes. Michael, thanks so much. Well, are American workers happy with their jobs? We took a look at a recently released report that examines American workers' satisfaction with their careers. That and more coming up after the break. And looking for ways to get better sleep. When you join us, The Problem Solvers brings us Consumer Reports tips for getting a better night's rest. Welcome back. It is 454 and looking at stories impacting your wallet now. Southwest Airlines canceled more than 16,000 flights over the last 10 days of December. The Transportation Department wants to know if Southwest deceived customers by scheduling more flights than it could handle. The department says scheduling too many flights would be considered an unfair and deceptive practice under federal law. Southwest defended its holiday schedule by saying it had a solid plan to operate it. And according to the Mortgage Bankers Association's seasonally adjusted index, total application volume increased by 7% last week compared to the week before. However, total purchase applications remained almost 39% lower than a year ago. At mortgage interest rates, they fell for the third straight week, dropping to the lowest level since September. And a new Gallup report shows only 32% of employees are actively engaged at work, while 18% say they're actively disengaged or disgruntled and disloyal. That's the highest that number has been in years. The remaining half say they're just doing the bare minimum to get by. Experts say changing requirements around remote and hybrid work and a lack of leadership connection. Those are all factors. Well, following a report of an unfounded gun threat, one Tulsa public school is reminding the community report potential threats. We've got more on that story the next half hour. 
And looking at temperatures this morning, uh, we've got some cold numbers out there. 20s at the moment uh, across uh, green country. We'll break down a look at our next wintry weather chance coming up in the next half hour. Yeah, I was a little bit like scared a little bit because you never know. He might just come in there and start shooting. I could just, you know, die or something. Or my family wouldn't know about it. A school forced into lockdown. What prompted the move from officials and the district's response to the situation? And a viewer called us after she and several other drivers hit a deep pothole on the eastbound Broken Arrow Expressway near 15th Street and popped their car tires. Two News reporter Amanda Slee is live with an update. Yeah, temperatures this morning off to a chilly start. How about this? Some low 20s even in uh, parts of the metro as we speak, where we end up this afternoon in just a moment. Plus, brews for the zoo. Enjoy some local beverages, all to support the Tulsa Zoo. I spoke with the managing owner of Neff Brewing, and I'll have more on how you can help support the cause. 2 News Oklahoma Today starts right now. You're watching 2 News Oklahoma Today. Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome, thanks so much for waking up with two. I'm Justin Fisher. And I'm Corey Duke, here with meteorologist Michael Sager. Good morning. Good You're morning. doing this, is that because you think you have a really good newscast? No, I, know, I, noticed either a little, I noticed a little dandruff maybe, or something oh, else yeah, going on Oh yeah, I'm sure you get that, yeah, totally. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. <laughs> Way to wake everybody up on that Thursday there. It's all good. <laughs> but uh, thankfully, no, thankfully no dandruff falling from the sky. We know uh, uh, snow or anything None of that like white that. stuff. None of that white stuff falling from the sky. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that's what I was doing. So. Yeah, you were just like, I'm, I'm so good. I'm like, oh, boy, this is uh, not no. looking good here. <laughs> that is not the way I perceived it. And now I thought this would go. <laughs> we're going to take a look at your first forecast. Now, your 2 News Oklahoma first forecast. Sponsored by Executive Homes. Uh, it's been a good morning so far for us. Definitely off to a chilly start, though, as you're heading out the door. But this is the view here in South Tulsa. Clear skies out there. And, of course, uh, a lot of cold temperatures. We've got numbers well down into the 20s this morning. And notice from where we were yesterday morning, a lot of us are double digits with how much colder it is. It's 13 degrees colder Coffeyville, 12 degrees colder right now in uh, Bristow to 12 degrees uh, colder in Oak Mulgee. So uh, definitely a colder start compared to yesterday. But, again, it's... January, we're going to have these cold mornings. 22 in Oak Mulgee, 26 now. Muskogee, 23 in Tulsa, 20 at the moment in Bartlesville. We'll see if we can get somebody to drop here into the upper teens before that sun comes up later on this morning. But kids heading out to the bus stop, certainly will want the coats. And then as we go into the afternoon, we'll notice more clouds filtering through by late morning and through the first half of the afternoon. I still think we'll get some sunshine to mix in, but don't be surprised if you see a few more clouds, especially by the time we go into the uh, midday to first part of the afternoon time frame 44 though for the high not too bad we'll see temperatures even warmer as we head into tomorrow and to open up the weekend when a cold front will bring some chill back and possibly a look at some wintry weather into next week we'll have a look at that too coming up in about 15 minutes michael thank you well classes will resume as normal after a tulsa high school was placed on lockdown wednesday tulsa public school says a student tipped to administrators that a student might have a gun on campus prompted an immediate lockdown. After a search, administrators said no gun was found and classes could continue. Chinu spoke with one father picking up his daughter, still rattled by the earlier confusion after hearing about the lockdown. I actually made a post on Facebook asking, did anyone know if there was like a certain website or like a certain number that we could call to get further information, you know, because with everything that's been going on around here, well, in the world right now, you know, the more information you can get, the faster would be the best way. Well, TPS answers that concern in a statement where it encourages, quote, our students, families, and community to always report safety incidents or concerns to our safety hotline by calling or texting 918-480-SAFE. Our hotline is staffed around the clock, and calls can be made anonymously and confidentially. It is 503 in a live look at the Broken Arrow Expressway now at Lewis, where a repavement project is underway. But despite that ongoing project, Several drivers have fallen victim to a pothole causing some flat tires in the BA Expressway. And 2 News Oklahoma's Amanda Slee is live on the BA this morning. And Amanda, what's the highway looking like right now? 
Good morning, Corey, Justin. So traffic is starting to pick up a little bit this morning and potholes can be a headache for drivers. They can be dangerous. So we drove the BA Expressway headed eastbound and we found that pothole to be just past the Utica exit and it's a deep one, but it's also mixed in with other blemishes. So it's kind of hard to spot, but this pothole caused at least five cars just last night to get flat tires and tow trucks had to take most of them away. We spoke to one of those drivers who was driving to work when she hit the pothole. Nobody was ahead of me, so I didn't see anybody else hit the pothole, so I had no idea it was there. It was sunset, so like there was shadows on the road, and I was like, oh, okay, you know. I hit a pothole, and then immediately uh, my tire pressure, like I hear noises, and my tire pressure drops to zero. So I had to go a half mile before I could exit the highway. She says after pulling off to a safe place, she saw her tire had a big tear in it and there was no spare tire in her trunk. In the meantime, she was waiting for a tow. She told us four other cars came to the same spot with a flat tire. Now we reached out to ODOT for comment and insight into this. An official told us that the contractor of the work zone is responsible for surface repairs. The department also said that the contractor did make some uh, pothole repairs yesterday, but clearly this one's still there. So drivers should be aware of that inner lane. Take it slow. If you can avoid that pothole, do it. If you find potholes, you can also call the city of Tulsa at 311. In Tulsa, Amanda Slee, 2 News, Oklahoma. Amanda, thank you. Well, this morning, we're following a string of burglaries across Tulsa. Over the past month, we've reported on at least six different incidents. Now another local business is targeted. Cat Cox owns Country Bird Bakery off East 3rd Street in Utica. The shop just opened in October, but it already has been dealing with the aftermath of a break-in. Cox says Wednesday morning, the owner of a neighboring business called to alert her, and when she arrived at her business, she found the door shattered. She says she believes the burglar targeted the cash register, but there was no cash in it. And while detectives work to solve this case, Cox says the community is already helping to get her back to working and baking. The nice thing is that the, the community in Tulsa, especially the food community, really um, helps each other out. O'Cock says the bakery will be open Saturday morning at 9. Taking a look at stories across the country now, the cause of a massive fire at a high-rise apartment building on Chicago's south side is under investigation. We know one person was killed, several others were hurt when it broke out. You're looking at video of that here. The Chicago Fire Department responding Wednesday morning for a fire on the upper floors. So it started on the 15th, quickly made its way up, impacting just about 10 floors. That forced residents to evacuate. The time right now is 5.06. With Russia's war in Ukraine approaching the one-year mark, the U.S. makes another big commitment to helping Ukraine. Yeah, Susan McGinnis is in Washington, where President Joe Biden announced the U.S. will send advanced tanks to Ukraine. Good morning, Corey and Justin. In a big shift for the White House, the U.S. will be sending dozens of tanks to Ukraine. U.S. allies stepping up their contributions as well, with the next phase of the battle they're expected to be tank warfare. This group is made up of some 50 President Biden announcing the U.S. will send 31 advanced M1 Abram tanks to Ukraine to help it defend itself and regain territory taken by Russia. Putin expected Europe and the United States to weaken our resolve. He expected our support for Ukraine to crumble with time. He was wrong. After resisting the move for months, the U.S. now sending a clear message to Russia and the world. The U.S. and NATO allies remain unified in support for Ukraine. This is a big day in Kyiv, a bad day in Moscow. The decision made in lockstep with Germany. Berlin announcing it's sending 14 of its own Leopard 2 tanks. A wave of help from the U.K., Poland and other allies expected to follow. Members of Congress appearing on board. I hope and expect that Germany and other European countries with tanks in their inventory will move expeditiously to send them to Ukraine. To those who want to pull the plug on Ukraine, you'll live to regret it. The U.S. treading a fine line, helping Ukraine, but careful not to provoke a nuclear-powered Russia. It is not an offensive threat to Russia. Russia saying Wednesday any Abrams tanks coming from the U.S. will, quote, burn. Yet 
Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky expressing gratitude, hopeful the effort will turn the tide of the war, which is expected to escalate in the spring. Now, U.S. tanks are not expected to reach Ukrainian battlefields for several months. The Pentagon plans to start training Ukrainian troops on the new equipment soon. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, 2 News, Oklahoma. And switching over to health news now, migraines are the leading source of chronic pain worldwide. A new study is shedding light on the impact those severe headaches have on the brain. Yeah, new research is getting us a little bit closer to understanding migraines. Researchers for the Radiological Society of North America spotted never-before-seen changes in the brain structure using MRIs. Well, migraine sufferers showed enlarged perivascular spaces, which are basically the spaces where the blood vessels come to give blood to the uh, brain. We're not sure whether the space comes from the migraines itself or that the space exists before the migraines and then that's what sets you up for the migraines. So it really helps to start to think about like what is, you know, the, the physiology behind how it works because migraines are very complex. And a new drug called Zavigapant is a nasal spray and it is in trials right now, stopping the pain for migraines as soon as 15 minutes after the first dose and it has been known to last up to 48 hours. There are also other treatment options that include ibuprofen, prescription drugs, supplements, acupuncture even, and herbs as well like feverfew or butterbur, which have been shown to reduce recurrence by 48%. Well, I have headaches, right? A lot of people do, but migraine is a whole nother level. I wanted to know more, show you some of the symptoms. Maybe you think they are headaches, but you might need that help. They can last from four hours, 72 hours even. If you're having those for 72 hours, I feel for you. According to the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, the most common are increased sensitivity to light, noise, odors, nausea, and vomiting. Let's get a look at traffic this morning. Everything has been running nice and smooth so far. We'll zoom in just a little bit closer here, take you right into uh, Highway 169, not dealing with any issues here. In fact, uh, hardly any traffic, as you can see there on the Renaissance Hotel camera on the Wage RV Weather Camera Network. Travel times look like this. Guy took to downtown about 20 minutes. The Pulp of the downtown about 16 minutes. Tulsa Hills to downtown, right about eight minutes. Well, still to come, a classic James Bond video game is playable. Once again, we have the details on how to do that on the return of Agent 007. And gel manicures are popular, but before you get one, consider that there could be some health risks. We take a look at what researchers are saying to consider before you put those brush painted nails under the lamp. We are off to a cold start this morning, but uh, hey, it's January after all, where we end up this afternoon and when temperatures will be back up above average, in just about another five minutes. Now, two news Oklahoma sports. And hey, we had two of the NBA's best scores in a duel last night in OKC. Thunder hosting the Hawks. Shea Gilgis Alexander was cooking as he is wont to do. 13 of 22 shooting, 36 points. How about the nutmeg on that assist for Kenrich Williams? Thunder scored 43 in the first quarter. We were tied 77 77 at the break. Second half, though, Norman native Trey Young matching SGA point for point. Trey stops on a dime to bury that three. Later in the lane with a floater and one. 33 for Young. Jalen Williams was great down the stretch for OKC. 24 points, five dunks. OKC would cut the lead to one in the final seconds, but the Hawks hold on to win at 137-132 in entertaining ball game in OKC last night. And welcome into sports, everybody. Good morning to you. Undefeated at home, undefeated in conference play. Ori Hoops entering the stretch run, ready to finish off one of the great seasons in program history. Golden Eagles open a three-game homestand against Denver tonight. They are 17-4 and this season, 8-0 and in conference play. Earlier this week, received a vote in the AP poll for the first time in more than a decade. You know, we use the Muhammad Ali saying around here a lot, we run in the dark to dance in the lights. And it's a tribute to our players of all the work that gets done behind the scenes so that when they do get under the lights, they do get recognition for it. And it's nice to be recognized, but it, again, we can't put the prize in front of the work. They've done the work. Uh, we just got to continue to do the work in order to pursue the prize. Yeah, the moment not too big for these Golden Eagles. While we were out there getting interviews, the boys were having some fun in the background. Look at this. Carlos Jorgen's doing most of the work. His future's so bright. He's got to wear shades. Finally got Max Aismas to crack. When Coach Mills was out there, look at those shades. It was Kareem Thompson making some noise before quietly reading a book at the free throw line. Wow, Jorgen's is back there doing push-ups. They were having some fun with us. 
All right, TU Women's Hoops trying to knock off a nationally ranked team for the first time ever yesterday. Second place Golden Hurricane hosting first place South Florida. Sepulpa native Tamira Poindexter scoring a team high 17 points. Bixby's Maddie Biddle chips in with 14. This game was tied with just four minutes to go in the second quarter, 29 all, but the Bulls finish the half on a 14-4 run and they pull away in the second. USF solidifying its hold on first place, 89-68 the final. Tulsa Oilers face the Allen Americans in a three-game set this weekend. The first two in Texas, then Sunday afternoon, they are at the BOK Center. The two teams tied for last place in the Mountain Division right now with 31 points. Oilers taking one of three against the Utah Grizzlies last week. Jimmy Soper scored two goals in Saturday's 5-2 victory. By the way, the Oilers have now won four straight games played on Saturdays. How about that? Soper tied for the team lead in scoring with 28 points. Well, he was tied for the team lead. The Oilers trading Soper for Norfolk's tag Bertuzzi this week. Bertuzzi, bright future, 21 years old, scored 18 goals in 28 games for Norfolk. Tulsa also acquires forward Brennan Blasnick from Kalamazoo this week. The puck drops Sunday afternoon at 4.05. It's another Sunday family fun day. It's also the return of the popular Princesses and Puck Drop promotion. And that is this week's Tulsa Oilers Minute. And that is also all we have for morning sports this morning. Hope you have a great day, everybody. We'll send it back to the desk. Kaden, thanks so much. The time right now, it is 517. And in your health headlines this morning, radiation from some nail dryers could potentially damage your DNA and have shown to create cancer-causing mutations in human cells in the laboratory. And that's according to a new study published in the journal Nature Communications. A professor of dermatology says it's similar to the risk posed by UV tanning beds, which are listed as carcinogenic. Now, researchers are implying that the UV nail lamps are like mini tanning beds for your nails. Some salons use LED lights, which emit either no UV light or at least a much smaller amount. Well, physical activity may keep your child at lower risk of getting sick. A new study from Poland found children with higher levels of daily physical activity are less likely to get upper respiratory tract infections like the common cold. Overall, kids who did less than three hours of activity per week dealt with cold symptoms longer than kids who played sports regularly. Researchers say exercise helps lower infection risk by reducing the number of inflammatory proteins in the body. Women, older adults, and those with lower incomes are more likely to depend on sleep meds. That's according to a new released CDC survey. Sleep medications, any prescription or over-the-counter drug used to help people fall or stay asleep. And experts say sleeping pills usually aren't recommended for older adults because of their side effects. They warn that taking them every day can lead to dependence and tolerance problems. Well, we do have some good news this morning. Union High School teacher is now in the running for national uh, or the title of National Teacher of the Year. Rebecca Peterson is a math teacher at Union High School and won the statewide title for 2023. She, along with five other teachers from across the country, are finalists for that national title. Let's get over to meteorologist Michael Sager now for a look at that forecast. We've got a good one for it today. It is a cold start this morning, but we'll notice some sunshine mixing with some clouds at times as we go through all oh, midday into the afternoon. Temperatures very similar to yesterday. Most of us are working our way up into the low to mid 40s this afternoon with a light west to northwest wind at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll start out with a lot of sunshine this morning, but again, I do expect some clouds to roll in as we go through late morning and through the first half of the afternoon. Then those clouds will move out as we head uh, into the evening hours. And temperature-wise, cooler to the north where we'll have more clouds. In fact, some of us may even struggle to make it to 40 as you get up here along the Oklahoma and Kansas State line, especially to the north and east, and then a little warmer as you go farther to the south and to the west. As we continue through the evening hours, temperatures will be dropping down through the 30s, probably close to freezing by 10 o'clock tonight, but the temperatures will probably hold fairly steady into tomorrow morning, upper 20s to low 30s with a light southwest to southerly breeze, keeping those temperatures fairly steady. But with clear skies and again, that light wind, those coats will come in handy. This is the view here this morning on our South Tulsa camera, the Wade's RV Weather Camera Network. Everything looking great as you're heading out the door right now. And as we head through the day, as mentioned, we'll have some clouds mixing in here, especially across the northeastern portions of the region as we go through, I'll say midday to afternoon. Then those will move out tonight. We'll have clear skies as we wake up tomorrow morning and we'll keep sunshine in the forecast for tomorrow with a southwest breeze tomorrow temperatures will get a bit more of a boost as we head into your Friday. Now fast forward here to early next week again a long ways to go we're a few days away from this but it looks like we'll have cold air in place and a system moving through maybe a couple of systems sweeping through early next week 
could give us some wintry weather, maybe a mix here across the I-44 region, sleet snow to the north, mostly rain to the south, and then we may drop that just a little bit farther south as we go into Tuesday. So this could be a multiple day type of event going into early next week where we'll have some wintry weather around. We'll continue to fine tune those details. 55 for the high tomorrow, I think 60 on Saturday before that cold front cools us down on Sunday. And again, all eyes on early next week with the possible wintry weather. Michael, thanks so much. Well, those under 18 years old will no longer be nominated for awards celebrating the worst movies and performances. We look into what has won satirical Hollywood award show changing its process. Looking for a little fitness inspiration? I'm Julie Chin. Join me for the Positively Oklahoma story of a mother-daughter duo who've been whipping green country into shape for nearly 75 years. That's tonight at 6 on 2 News Oklahoma. That's right, Duncan is planning to sell its own alcoholic drinks. People were like, ew, what's even in it? And Duncan said, that's classified. All right, you can watch on tonight's show starring Jimmy Fallon weeknights at 1030. That is only on 2 News. Yeah, what's in it? We want to know. To be determined. To be determined. <laughs> Just drink it. You'll find out. Well, the <laughs> Razzies have removed a child actor from the annual list of nominees. So Ryan Kira Armstrong, she was nominated this week for Worst Actress for her performance in Firestarter. All the Golden Raspberry Awards, a formal name for the Razzies, is a satire of Hollywood award shows, which bills itself as celebrating the best of the worst in cinema. However, there was backlash given that Armstrong was only 12 years old. I mean, come on. The Razzies has now removed Armstrong from the nominations list, issued an apology to. Moving forward, the Razzies says it will only nominate those who are 18 years or older. Makes sense to me. All right, 526 right now. After years of rumors, speculation, Agent 007 finally coming back to gaming systems. Oh my God. GoldenEye, yeah, that's wow. right. 007 will be available to Xbox, Game Pass, and Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack subscribers. So if you're not one of those, you might want to get to it. The classic first-person shooter is widely noted as one of the most influential and evolutionary FPS games ever created first-person shooter. Originally released in 1997 for the Nintendo 64, the game <laughs> will now be playable on both the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox. The pixelated Pierce Brosnan is back in action this Friday. And nostalgia, just looking at I mean, that, playing we, that as a kid. We were kind of talking about it. I don't think I've, nobody's ever finished that game. I think it's, it's, a, it's, a never, it's a never ending game. Yeah. All right. 527 right now. For those who feel guilty about not participating in dry January this year, we have a way to help you feel a little bit better about that choice. Coming up, how a local brewery is helping support the Tulsa Zoo. Temperatures have been well down into the 20s this morning. Keeping an eye on our next chance of wintry weather. We're going to get a look at that coming up here in the next half hour. I'm Joe St. George in Washington. Should Congress be doing more to protect animals and dogs in our country? Some certainly think so. We break down the numbers and why new regulations could get passed this year next. Well, several Muskogee County volunteer fire departments must surrender all funds and submit an inventory of county purchased equipment to county officials within 30 days. I'll tell you why. The officials reminding Oklahoma residents that emergency SNAP benefit payments coming to an end. We speak with some members of the Tulsa community to see how that change will impact their day to day lives. And we're off to a cold start this morning. Uh, Temperature-wise, a lot of us are down into the 20s. This is the view here from Tulsa International Airport, where we're going to end up today for any plans you got this afternoon in just a moment. A NASA system predicts a small asteroid will pass close by Earth this week. We have more on the asteroid that will have a very close encounter with our planet in today's Top 5 at 5. Tune in Oklahoma today. It continues right now. You're watching 2 News Oklahoma Today. And a lovely Thursday morning to you. Glad to see you. I'm Corey Duke. I'm Justin Fish. You see that graphic? Very close encounter, not very. just a close encounter. It's a very close. So we we're going to tell you just all too familiar with this. Let's get over to meteorologist <laughs> Michael Sager for a look at that forecast. Michael, good morning. How are you, my friend? Good morning. Doing well on this Thursday morning. Got one more day to get through. Friday will be here. And we're starting out this morning into the 20s. 20 degrees on the nose. In fact, in Bartlesville, 22 Oak Mulgee, 26 degrees in Muskogee, 23 in 
Tulsa. That oh, hot uh, cup of coffee or maybe a hot chocolate will do you well this morning. Compared to where we were yesterday, a lot of us here, uh, about 10 to 13 degrees colder, although we are at 8 degrees colder uh, compared to this time yesterday in Stigler, but 12 degrees colder right now in Tulsa as well as in Bristol, Bartlesville, and in Pryor. So you'll feel the difference as you're heading out the door. Thankfully, not a lot of wind, so you don't have to worry too much about the wind chill. Great view here from Brookside looking back towards South Tulsa on the Wage RV Weather Camera Network. And we'll work our way back up into the low to mid-40s this afternoon, similar to where we were yesterday for those afternoon highs. We'll have a few more clouds mix in as well, especially by late morning, midday, and into the afternoon. And then a warm-up is on the way for tomorrow. And as we open up the weekend, when the next cold front, though, will sweep through, bringing some chill back to the region, and when we have a chance for some wintry weather returning to green country in just about 15 minutes. Michael, thank you. Well, several drivers are now having to replace their tires after getting a flat from a pothole on the Broken Arrow Expressway. Now, it's located near the Utica exit that is headed eastbound. Yeah, so we want to take a live look now from the BA Expressway at Lewis, looking to the west toward Utica. The News Oklahoma's Amanda Slee is live with details on what drivers are dealing with. Amanda, good morning. Good morning, Corey, Justin. So the pothole is located just east of where we are. It's in a construction zone and it's kind of hard to see because it's mixed in with other blemishes that are on the road and it's a deep one when you do see it. So this um, even worse uh, with where this pothole is located is after you hit it, the next exit to get off is 15th Street, which is about a mile further. So just last night, at least five drivers we met fell victim to this pothole, leaving them to be towed away. Nicole Klopp was one of those drivers and she was headed to work when it happened. She's now frustrated as this caused her to be late to work. Also, there was a two hour wait for tows and now she has to pay a couple hundred dollars to get a new tire. Obviously, our roads need some major work. I mean, four flat tires in the span of half an hour is not driver's fault. It's obviously road hazard and it's not OK. Now this a uh, pothole is in the area of a construction zone. They are ODOT is actually doing a pavement rehabilitation program. So we are just no, or just west of that construction zone where it starts. And we actually found this chunk of road. This is a chunk of the road. What well, my photographer found it sitting on the side of the road. So these are the types of things that we're seeing in this construction zone. And that's why drivers should be where. So you don't fall victim to a pothole or other big rocks like this one. I'm going to set this down. We reached out to ODOT about this issue and officials tell us that the uh, contractor is responsible for the road, the surface repairs and they actually did do some surface repairs yesterday, but that was before we got calls of this other pothole. So that one clearly still needs to be fixed. So as you're driving the BA Expressway headed eastbound, make sure you're aware. And if you do come across any, you can call the city of Tulsa at 311. In Tulsa, Amanda Slee, 2 News, Oklahoma. Amanda, thank you. Four volunteer fire departments in Muskogee County are required to hand over all funds and county purchased inventory to county commissioners. That's after commissioners had a meeting on Monday where legal counsel said those departments are not in compliance with state statutes. Well, Mountain View, Rushy Mountain, Keefton, and Buckhorn are the four listed as Title 19 fire districts in Muskogee County. John Tyler Hammonds, the county attorney, says every purchase firefighters make with county funds needs to be properly filed, but apparently it's not happening. Chief Clayton Webb with the Buckhorn Fire Department says his department isn't doing anything malicious. We want to make sure that the county's money, the taxpayers' money, is being spent for what it should be spent for. They are essentially destroying their county 19 fire departments because we can't function the way they want us to function. The four departments have 30 days to file all inventory and hand over funds. They will also be audited by the state fire pension system and state auditor as well. 536 now, and it's a big change coming to the way some Oklahomans feed their families. SNAP emergency allotments will expire nationwide in February. Well, nearly 13 or three years now, excuse me, uh, people have received SNAP benefits, but also getting that little something extra above the normal amount. Emergency allotments or additional benefits normally arrive later in the month while normal SNAP benefits are typically loaded onto electronic benefits transfer cards at the beginning of the month. Well, in fiscal year 2022, more than 408,000 families received SNAP benefits. The average benefit was $7.07 .07 per person per day. 
Oklahomans are now encouraged to plan for the benefits they had before the pandemic. Oklahoma Department of Human Services, or DHS, says it wants families uh, to have as much time as possible to get ready for this, for the upcoming change to those benefits. All right, it's 537. Tulsa's own Neff Brewing is raising funds to support the Tulsa Zoo. This evening, the brewery is hosting Brews for the Zoo Pint Night starting at 5 p.m. When you order any beer for $15, you'll get two special edition glasses with the Tulsa Zoo and Asian elephant art. You can take them home. All the proceeds go to the Zoo. Neff only keeps the cost to make the beer by the glassware. I visited the tap room and spoke to Jonathan Neff about why they chose the Tulsa Zoo to raise funds for. I've always uh, grown up loving the zoo, and it was actually uh, my first job out of high school, uh, my freshman year of college. I was working at the uh, gift shop at the Tulsa Zoo there for a while. And uh, it's just something that's always had a special place in my heart. I love going to the zoo, uh, love their mission and what they do, and all the you know, AZA accredited facilities. I think they do a great job. And along with the pint glasses, you will also get a coupon for $20 off a zoo membership. Neff Brewing is gluten-friendly for everything they have, and everyone in the family can join in on that event. All right, covering the Capitol now, should the federal government take steps to increase its inspections of dog breeding facilities? Some animal right advocates are pushing for Congress to make some changes to current laws to make federal fines bigger and inspections more frequent. 2 News Oklahoma's Joe St. George joining us from Washington this morning with a look at the push to protect more dogs. And we do want to warn you, some of these images, they may be tough to watch. Having a dog is, well, a lot. Yes, a lot of cleanups. Very humbling. And training. Sit. But a lot of fun. Good boy. Well, if you haven't caught on by now, this is my dog, Tucker, a golden retriever. And while my wife and I think we've given him a pretty good life, the reality is that not every dog is as lucky. And the question is, should our government be doing more? to protect dogs. For decades, we've had this problem. Ingrid Segerman certainly thinks so. She's a lobbyist with the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, or the ASPCA. Specifically, she wants Congress to compel the Department of Agriculture, which inspects dog breeding facilities, to inspect and fine breeders more for violations. They basically have this program of inaction. They're hardly ever issuing fines. We didn't just take her word for it. We looked at the public records, which you can too at US USDA.gov. Last year, there were only 11 administrative actions by the agency involving breeders. And while some fines were issued, this one's for over 12 grand. Some were just warnings. This is just an official warning. The ASPCA says it would be nice to believe that more dogs are getting treated like Tucker in our country, and that's why violations are low. Sadly, she doesn't believe that. More fines are needed, she says, to keep more dogs happy. Minimal fines just don't work. It doesn't have a deterring effect. It doesn't actually deter that facility from violating the law again. And that's where the Goldies Act comes in. We want to warn you, these next images are tough to watch. The act is named after this unnamed, malnourished golden retriever in Iowa. It took 18 visits and six months for the owner of this facility to have his license suspended by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This precious pup eventually had to be put down. Goldie's Act would order the agency to inspect more and impose stronger penalties. A bipartisan coalition in Congress is expected to try and include it in this year's Farm Bill, legislation that happens every five years and often makes policy changes at the USDA. It would basically make the USDA do its job. As for the Department of Agriculture, we did reach out to them for an interview. They would only give us a statement that said in part that they take the welfare of animals very seriously and noted that they are already inspecting and fining animal owners after investigations. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. The Department of Transportation announced the scope of its investigation into Southwest Airlines following its holiday flight meltdown. We take a look at the investigation in today's Consumer News. And we are off to a chilly start to this morning, but a warm-up is on the way. What days we expect to be the warmest of the next few, and when the next cold front will chill us right back down in about five minutes. That's when I was shot. Shot multiple times and nearly killed in the line of duty. I'm 2 News Oklahoma anchor Sharon Phillips. Join me tonight as we show you how one foundation is working to get ballistic shields like this into every law enforcement agency. Welcome back. The time right now is 545. Very happy to have you with us. Taking a live look at green country right now where it's slow moving, 
and it's also a chilly morning. Warm-up is on the way, though. Michael Sager is going to have your forecast here in just a second. But before we get to that, let's get your news to go. Today, Fire Station 2 in Jinx and the Police Department holding a safe kids car seat checkup. It's a perfect opportunity for new and expecting parents to have their car seats properly installed. You know, before you take that newborn home from the hospital. Well, safe kids certified firefighters or police officers, they'll be on hand to help you out. And it's not just for new parents. Anyone is welcome to come get their car seats checked. That is today from 10 to noon. Certified officers can help you anytime as well installing a car seat. You don't have to just go out there today. You can call 918-299-6311 for more information. And, of course, we are keeping an eye on that to start this morning with uh, temperatures down right around the low to mid-20s. But we've got a nice day in store for today and a warm-up on the way as we are heading over the next few days, at least over the next couple of days. Cold front's going to come in Saturday night, and then we will see a wintry mix possibly moving in early next week. That's really going to be the focus into next week, that potential for some wintry weather. And it could be enough to be impactful as as well. Just notice the difference over the weekend. A tale of two seasons. We'll have a two seasons, excuse me. We'll have a tail. Uh, we'll have a uh, southerly breeze as we uh, head out on Saturday. And then as we go into Sunday, much colder air moves in behind a cold front that's going to come in on Saturday night. So you can see that difference. Uh, if you got any plans this weekend, Saturday is definitely the better of the two days. And there might even be a chance of some showers as that front moves in Saturday night into very early Sunday morning. But don't expect it to be very heavy if we even get any at all. Here's what it looks like right now overlooking uh, all parts of green country. We've got Grand Lake to the bottom left. We've got uh, South Tulsa there to the top left and even from Brookside and downtown. Everything's looking good this morning on the Wade's RV Weather Camera Network. Clear skies out there. Temperatures have dropped off down to 23 now in Tulsa. Light west wind at around six miles per hour may add just a little bit of a chill, but thankfully the wind chills are not too out of control this morning. We'll work our way into the low to mid 40s for highs this afternoon and we will notice more clouds mixing in as we go through uh, late morning and midday and into the afternoon, but then those clouds move out overnight tonight. I think the model's probably a little too warm for tomorrow morning. I think we will be down near or just below freezing tomorrow morning, but then well up into the 50s for highs as we go into tomorrow afternoon with the help of a southwest breeze. And look at Saturday. We just talked about it, that high near 60. There's the chance for wintry weather early next week. Still uh, way too early to know exactly how things will play out, but it looks like we're at least going to have a shot at some wintry weather. It could be everything. We could have freezing rain, sleet. We could have snow across parts of the region. Uh, we'll continue to fine tune those details as we go over the next few days, but just kind of keep that in mind for anything you have into next week. Sounds like a slushy mess to me. It sure does. It does. It's 548 <laughs> time for our top five at five, starting with number five. New research says dogs can tell when humans are teasing them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> researchers in Austria. That's not nice. Researchers in Austria decided this is what we're going to be doing mm -hmm. with our time. That's okay. what I wish I was doing with my time. Me too. They observed the <laughs> interactions, the reactions of nearly 100 dogs to humans who offered them food. Here's what happened. They either teased the dog by holding up and pulling back a treat, or they pretended to clumsily drop the treat out of reach. Overall, the dogs responded more patiently when humans pretended to drop a treat than when they intentionally pulled it away. Researchers say the findings suggest dogs <laughs> can't understand our intentions. I either believe or disbelieve this because my dog doesn't understand my intentions when I say stop barking at nothing outside or eat your food because I'm intending to be you know, a good person. I want him to eat and he doesn't care. I don't think they he care He knows either. what I'm doing. I know. I, he either doesn't or he does. And either way, I'm I not totally, happy about it. I totally it. agree. I keep telling my dog, do not take, my, my daughter has like food. Do not take that out of her hand. And she's like, listen, lady, just I'm going to take this down. food. I'm okay, do this want. is a little person and I'm going to take advantage. You're just teasing me as well. <laughs> oh, there you go. Maybe we'll tease you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number four. An asteroid is about to make a really close encounter with Earth potentially one of the closest yet. There is no risk of the asteroid impacting our planet, so that is certainly some good news. But the asteroid is estimated to be about the size of a box truck. Oh, well, that's good a, thing it's not coming size. to the Earth. If you remember the, the uh, meteorite that we had, or the meteor that uh, kind of lit up the sky became some of those small meteorites uh, when we talked to those uh, 
uh, meteorite hunters. They said that was either the size of a basketball to maybe the size of a shopping cart. So now we're so you can about imagine a, a box, box truck. truck. Well, yeah, we're so very thankful that's staying yes, away. Yes. Yeah. So uh, again, it will zoom right over the southern tip of South America today, about 2,200 miles above the Earth's surface. That's pretty close. In fact, if you drive from Jacksonville on Interstate 10 to Los Angeles, that's 2,400 miles. Oh, that's pretty oh. far. So, oh, it's, 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 so uh, uh, close, yeah, but this not is, that close. Right. Well, if you I'd, say, I'd say close by, you know, astronomy and astronomical standards. Stand that's yeah. that's yeah, yeah. pretty close. Getting so to a Earth. Not yeah. very close encounter. Ugh. Ish. That scares me. I don't like it. All right, number three now is Valentine's Day. The Honolulu Zoo offering a unique gift for. Oh, uh, I don't want to look at that. Or maybe not so special person in your life. That's gross. For a five, ten, or twenty dollar donation, you can name a mealworm, cricket, or veggie after an X, or anyone. <laughs> Anyone, actually. No, I don't like Even you. the love of your life. <laughs> <laughs> the zoo is they're going to feed it to an animal. That person will also get a digital Valentine's Day card letting them know that they were a snack. So if you want to shell out $100, uh, the zoo will even create a personalized video showing the animal eating that treat. Oh, that's a lot of money, but that is, is petty. Wow. That wow. That is petty, petty, petty. Wow. You open up, you're like, oh, what's this? This is so nice. Oh, this, is, for, this is from my ex? Okay. Uh, oh, that's me. Oh, oh. now, the, yeah. That's eating me. That's if you if you really spend a nice. hundred dollars on this, please let me know. I gotta uh, I gotta dig into that brain. I love All how right. it says love bites. <laughs> oh, mealworms are just. That's pretty nasty. All right, number two now. Yeah, well, here we go. If you're married, hopefully you celebrate your spouse every day of the year. But today offers an opportunity for extra celebration because it is National Spouses Day. Oh. According to the NationalDayCalendar.com, National Spouses Day has been observed since the mid 1980s maybe you do want to buy them uh tell them that they are a snack and buy them mealworm to be eaten you know i'm not going to make my husband eat mealworms he is a wonderful husband well they would be an animal eating mealworms yeah Just well oh video. yeah you're right i'm not going to make my husband eat the mealworms <laughs> it's protein right or something i'm not like going to name or? a mealworm after my husband let's put it that way all, right. all right finally at number one a puppy is safe thanks to the quick thinking of firefighters in colorado the nine-week-old dog's family called for help the little puppy after she couldn't get out from under a reclining couch when South Adams County firefighters arrived, they realized the only safe way to get Nina out was to take that couch apart. They successfully disassembled the couch enough to get the blue-nosed pit bull pup out safely and even stayed after to put the couch all back together. Look at her, how cute is she? But not before he and the others enjoyed some well-deserved puppy kisses. Okay, Dad. Oh, we rescued you. <laughs> Stay out from Aww, underneath the couch. Yeah, get on top of the couch go back next time. It, yeah. Congratulations to them and to that dog and family. So cute. <laughs> All right, here's a Congratulations. nice, yeah, <laughs> segue for you. <laughs> Are American workers happy with their jobs? I don't know. We're going to take a look at a recently released report that examines American workers' satisfaction with their careers. That and much more coming up after the break. And looking for ways to get better sleep. Yes. Everyone in here is raising their hands. When you join us tonight at 10, the Problem Solvers are going to bring us a consumer report with some tips for getting a better night's rest. Welcome back. A new Gallup report shows only 32% of employees are actively engaged at work. 18% say they're actively disengaged or disgruntled or disloyal. That's the highest that number has been in years. The remaining half say they're just doing the bare minimum to get by. Experts say changing requirements around remote and hybrid work and a lack of leadership connection. Those are all factors. Well, we're just getting started here on 2 News Oklahoma Today. That's right. We're back in three minutes. Potholes on the BA Expressway. After cold snaps, wet weather, potholes are inevitable, but we have a live report about a problem area that you need to know about. And life returns to normal at one Tulsa High School after being locked down because of a gun incident. We're going to hear from a father who was rattled by this scare. It's coming up. And temperatures this morning are down into the low to mid 20s right now in the metro. How about Hominy at 19 degrees at the moment? We've got a warm up on the way. We'll break down when those warmer temperatures will arrive coming up here this half hour. Plus, migraine treatments. We're taking a look at the possible treatments that could get rid of that pain. One can give you relief for up to 48 hours. That is coming up at 617, but 2 News Oklahoma Today starts right now. You're watching 2 News Oklahoma Today. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for waking up with two. I'm Justin Fisher. And I'm Corey Duke here with meteorologist Michael Sager. So finally, here we are, Thursday. Yes. Everyone's looking forward to probably a better day than we've seen in the past with these cold temperatures. <laughs> so what do you got for us? It's still going to be a little chilly today, but uh, not too bad if you got any plans to uh, take you out and about. You're not going to have to worry about any wintry weather or anything like that. And even warmer temperatures on the way as we head into tomorrow. All right, let's take a look at that first forecast. 
now, your 2 News Oklahoma first forecast, sponsored by Executive Homes. It is a cold start, though, this morning. Those coats will come in handy. We are at 22 degrees currently Oak Mulgee, 23 in McAllister, 24 in Tulsa, 20 degrees in Bartlesville. And we had just looked at it there in that closer view across the metro, uh, 19 degrees in Hominy. So we had at least one location down in the upper teens this morning. And you can see compared to where we were yesterday, a lot of us are double digits with how much colder. Thankfully, not a lot of wind. There might be just a little bit of a breeze, but the wind chills are not too out of control this morning with those colder temperatures. Here's what it looks like from uh, Brookside looking back toward uh, South Tulsa here. There you can see the Cityplex towers into the distance. Great view here on the Wade's RV Weather Camera Network with clear skies overhead. We will notice some clouds mixing in, especially from mid to late morning through the afternoon. 43 for that drive home later on today. We're going to be in good shape. We're going to break down what we could expect with that warm up tomorrow and as we open up the weekend and when we've got our next chance of wintry weather in about 15 minutes. Much appreciated, Michael. Let's take a live look right now at the Broken Arrow Expressway at Lewis, where a repavement project is underway. And despite that project, several drivers have fallen victim to a pothole causing some flat tires. Today's Oklahoma's Amanda Slee live at the 15th Street exit on the BA Expressway, where our team found stuck drivers last night. So, Amanda, you drove the highway. What was it like? Good morning, Corey, Justin. So we're actually just, we're not at the 15th Street exit right now. We're just on the BA Expressway and the 15th ed exit sign is past us. But um, we drove this highway and we found that pothole. It's just past the Utica exit in your left lane. It's hard to notice because there's a bunch of other bumps and other road blemishes mixed in with it. But it's a pretty deep one. I mean, clearly it's causing people to get flat tires. Just last night, our report, our photographer came upon five cars uh, that are that were stuck on the side of the road due to those flat tires and tow trucks had to take most of them away. We spoke to one of those drivers who was she was just trying to get to work when she hit the pothole. Nobody was ahead of me, so I didn't see anybody else hit the pothole, so I had no idea it was there. It was sunset, so like there was shadows on the road, and I was like, oh, okay, you know. I hit a pothole, and then immediately uh, my tire pressure, like I hear noises, and my tire pressure drops to zero. So I had to go a half mile before I could exit the highway. She says after pulling off to a safe place, which was on 15th exit, she said she saw her tire had a big tear in it and there was no spare tire in her trunk. So in the meantime, while she was waiting for a tow, she told us that four other cars came to the same spot with a flat tire as well from that pothole. Now we reached out to the Oklahoma Department of Transportation regarding this and officials tell us that since it's a work area, the contractor is responsible for the surface repairs. Now, they did tell us that there were some uh, pothole surface repairs done yesterday, but that was we uh, from our communication. It looked like that was done before these other drivers hit another pothole. So it looks like there's another area that they need to address. So drivers need to be aware as they're heading eastbound on BA Expressway towards Utica, towards 15th Street, that there are some potholes in the area. In Tulsa, Amanda Slee, 2 News, Oklahoma. Amanda, thank you. Most students at a Tulsa High School are returning to normalcy this morning after Wednesday's lockdown because of a gun incident. A Tulsa Public School says a student tipped to administrators that a student might have a gun on campus had prompted an immediate lockdown. After a search, administrators said no gun was found and classes could continue. 2 News spoke with one father picking up his daughter, still rattled by the earlier confusion after hearing about the lockdown. I actually made a post on Facebook asking did anyone know if there was like a certain website or like a certain number that we could call to get further information, you know, because with everything that's been going on around here, well, in the world right now, you know, the more information you can get, the faster would be the best way. Well, TPS answers that concern in a statement where they encourage, quote, our students, families and community always report safety incidents or concerns to our safety hotline by calling or texting 918-480-SAFE. Our hotline is staffed around the clock and calls can be made anonymously and confidentially. All right, 605 this morning, we are following a string of burglaries across Tulsa. Over the past month, we've reported on at least six different incidents. Well, now another local business is targeted. Cat Cox owns Country Bird Bakery. It is off East 3rd Street in Utica. The shop just opened in October. Hasn't even been a couple months, but already it's dealing with an aftermath 
of break-ins. Cox says the owner of a neighboring business called to tell her what had happened, and when she got there, she found the door shattered. She says that she believes the burglar targeted the cash register, but there wasn't any in it. And while detectives work to solve this case, Cox says the community is already helping to get her back to work and baking. The nice thing is that the, the community in Tulsa, especially the food community, really um, helps each other out. Multitasking right there. Cox says the breaker will be open Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. And let's get a look at traffic this morning. As you are heading out, things have been running nice and smooth, so we like to see that. We'll zoom in just a little bit closer here, get a look at the Crosstown Expressway, uh, 244 and 44. If you're coming in uh, from Catoosa or Claremore into downtown, everything is running smooth at the moment. Travel times look like this. Walsh to downtown about 14 minutes. Claremore to downtown, that route will take you about 27 minutes. Glenpool to downtown, 16 minutes. Well, some Green Country Fire Departments are being told to hand over all funds and inventory to the County Commission. We're going to hear from both sides of this debate in three minutes. Plus, a new program being offered by the Cherokee Nation to fight opioid addiction plaguing our state. And it's free to everyone. This story is coming up in just five minutes. That's when I was shot. Shot multiple times and nearly killed in the line of duty. I'm 2 News Oklahoma anchor Sharon Phillips. Join me tonight as we show you how one foundation is working to get ballistic shields like this into every law enforcement agency. Four volunteer fire departments in Muskogee County are required to hand over all funds and county purchased inventory to county commissioners. That is after commissioners had a meeting on Monday where legal counsel said those departments are not in compliance with state statutes. Well, Mountain View, Bushy Mountain, Keefton, and Buckhorn are the four listed as Title 19 fire districts in Muskogee County. Well, John Tyler Hammonds, the county attorney, says every purchase firefighters make with county funds needs to be properly filed. Says that's not happening. Well, Chief Clayton Webb, on the other hand, with Buckhorn Fire Department, says his department is not doing anything malicious. We want to make sure that the county's money, the taxpayers' money, is being spent for what it should be spent for. They are essentially destroying their county 19 fire departments because we can't function the way they want us to function. So the four departments have 30 days to file all inventory and hand over funds. They will also be audited by the state fire pension system and state auditor. Well, there's a new innovative program to address opioid addiction plaguing our state, and it's run by the Cherokee Nation, but open to anyone and it is free. The Harm Reduction Program is a place where addicts not ready for treatment can go anonymously and get sterile syringes and first aid kits, plus education and peer support. Julie Skinner with the Harm Reduction Program says she's fielded concerns from residents who feel handing out syringes could lead to more drug use. I would hope that they would have an open mind and understanding that there's a lot of research all across this world um, that have used uh, harm reduction programs to get people into help. It's five times more likely to go inpatient and get services with a safe syringe program in the community than one that doesn't have one. And according to the CDC, Oklahoma has one of the highest rates of hepatitis C. Offering clean syringes helps prevent bloodborne infections and HIV in the community. Well, Boeing's headed to court today over the certification of the 737 MAX. The preview is on the other side of the break. Plus, if you suffer from migraine pain, listen up. There could be medication that will get rid of that pain in just 15 minutes. Hear from a doctor to better understand where migraines come from. We've got temperatures into the 20s this morning, so a bit of a chilly start for us. But how about a warm-up on the way when we could even make a run close to 60 degrees in about five more minutes? Welcome back. The time right now, it is 6.16. You're taking a live look at green country this morning. Those roadways looking pretty nice for you and your commute into work this morning. What will that weather look like today? Well, meteorologist Michael Sager, he's going to tell you coming up. Yeah, let's get to a check of your top stories from around the world first. At least one person is dead, two others wounded after Russian attacks in Ukraine. The casualties happen in Kyiv. Ukrainian officials say air defenses shot down more than a dozen Russian missiles. An air raid alert does remain in place across the country. And Boeing is due in court today. The appearance is an arraignment on a federal fraud charge involving the certification of the 737 MAX. Family members of victims from two deadly crashes in 2018 and 2019 will be allowed to speak at the hearing. Today, an asteroid will make a close encounter with Earth. It's about the size of a box truck as well, expected to fly 2,200 miles above the southern tip of South America. NASA's Impact Hazard Assessment System 
ruled out a strike and said most of it would disintegrate in the atmosphere if it does get close enough. Good news there. Well, in health news this morning, migraines are the leading source of chronic pain worldwide, and new study is shedding light on the impact those severe headaches have on your brain. Yeah, new research is getting us closer to understanding migraines. Researchers for the Radiological Society of North America spotted never before seen changes in the brain structure using MRIs. Migraine sufferers showed enlarged perivascular spaces of basically the spaces where the blood vessels come in to give blood to the brain. We're not sure whether the space comes from the migraines itself or that the space exists before the migraines and then that's what sets you up for the migraines. So it really helps to start to think about like what is, you know, the, the physiology behind how it works because migraines are very complex. Yeah, and a new drug called uh, Zavegapant uh, pant is a nasal spray and it's in trials right now. It stopped the pain from migraines as soon as 15 minutes after the first dose and it has been known to last up to 48 hours. There are also other treatment options that include ibuprofen, we have these on your screen, uh, prescription drugs, supplements, acupuncture, even some uh, herb herbs as well that can show uh, reduce occurrence up to 48%. Uh, but I wanted to know more about this, about headaches, because we all have them, right? But migraines really are on another level. Uh, and they can last from four to 72 hours. That's according to the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. The most common symptoms are increased sensitivity to light, noise and odors, nausea and vomiting as well. So if you have any of those and it lasts for a long time, get checked out. There is new medication that could help you with that pain. All right, 619, let's get over to meteorologist Michael Sager for a look at that forecast. Hey, Michael. We've got some pretty good weather to finish out the week. I think tomorrow will be quite a bit warmer compared to what we will see today, but you don't have to worry about any issues uh, stepping outside for your Thursday plans. Notice as we get into the afternoon, those temperatures will be warming up uh, into the low to mid 40s. We'll have some clouds mixing through with a little bit of sunshine as well, even though we're going to start things out with uh, fairly clear skies this morning. But again, very similar to yesterday temperature wise, pretty much low to mid 40s might feel just a little bit cooler with that uh, west to northwest breeze and might even get some warmer numbers here just south and west of the metro this afternoon. Now as we continue through the evening hours, we'll fall back through the 30s. Any clouds that we've got out there will clear out right just above the freezing mark at 10 o'clock. And I do think temperatures will probably hold fairly steady near or just below freezing into tomorrow morning as we'll have a light southwest to southerly wind develop tomorrow morning. And that will just uh, tend to keep those temperatures up a little bit warmer tomorrow morning compared to what we've got out there this morning. But lots of us in the low to mid 20s right now as you're heading out the door. This is the view here from our South Tulsa cam looking down on the uh, Arkansas River. Great view on the Wade's RV Weather Camera Network. You can see the clear skies that we've got overhead at the moment as well. Mention those clouds that'll mix in. They'll come in from the north here and the west, and then they'll move on out as we head into the evening hours. May get a few more into tomorrow morning as a weak little system passes by, but then lots of sunshine tomorrow. And with a southwest breeze tomorrow, temperature should get a nice boost into the 50s. Now we're going to fast forward here into early next week. Again, this is just a very rough draft of what we might see into early next week. But it does look like we have the potential for some wintry weather to move in and perhaps a wintry mix across parts of the metro on Monday. Cold enough for sleet snow to the north and mostly rain, but a cold rain at that to the south. We might see that shift a little bit farther to the south as we go into Tuesday. So there is potential for some wintry weather to start things out next week. Could be impactful wintry weather. There's our warm up though for tomorrow. 55 degrees for the high. I think we could make a run to 60 on Saturday before we do chill it down on Sunday. And then we'll continue to fine tune that forecast early next week. Let's get a look at traffic this morning as you are heading out. So right now everything's running smooth. Let's get a closer look here right along Highway 169. Not dealing with any issues here. And everything's been running fairly smooth across the area. We've got to travel times here. Broken Arrow, Lynn Lane to downtown about 13 minutes. Sand Springs to downtown 6 minutes. Okmulgee to downtown 41 minutes. All right, Michael. Much appreciated, my good friend. For those of you who might feel a little bit of guilt about not participating in dry January this year, we have a way to help you feel a little bit better about that choice. Coming up at 624, how a local brewery is helping support the Tulsa Zoo. Looking for a little fitness inspiration? I'm Julie Chin. Join me for the Positively Oklahoma story of a mother-daughter duo who've been whipping green country into shape for nearly 75 years. That's tonight at 6 on 2 News Oklahoma.
Well, welcome back. Tulsa's own Neff Brewing raising funds to support the Tulsa Zoo. It is happening this evening. The brewery is hosting Brews for the Zoo pint night starting at 5 p.m. You go in, you order any $15 beer, and you will get two special edition glasses with the Tulsa Zoo and Asian Elephant Art to take home. Got that for you right there. All the proceeds go to the zoo. Neff is only keeping the money that it costs to make the beer by the glassware. I visited the taproom and spoke with Jonathan Neff. He uh, is uh, one of the owners there about why they chose Tulsa Zoo to raise funds for this. I've always uh, grown up loving the zoo and it was actually uh, my first job out of high school, uh, my freshman year of college. I was working at the uh, gift shop at the Tulsa Zoo there for a while. And uh, it's just something that's always had a special place in my heart. I love going to the zoo, uh, love their mission and what they do and all the you know, AZA accredited facilities. I think they do a great job. And along with the pint glasses, you will also get a coupon for $20 off of a zoo membership. Neff Brewing, it's all gluten-free uh, gluten and uh, everyone in the family can join in on that event. Well, and some more good news this morning. A Union High School teacher now on the running for the title of National Teacher of the Year. Rebecca Peterson is a math teacher at Union High School, won the statewide title for 2023. She, along with five other teachers from across the country and finalists for the national title, they're all involved in this. Congratulations to her. It just says a lot about what she does for her kiddos. Well, drivers, beware. If you're driving down the BA Expressway, could be a costly hole in the road. What to do if you see potholes on the Tulsa roads coming up in the next half hour. Plus, if you receive SNAP benefits, some changes are coming. What payments are stopping? We got that for you coming up. Live look outside. We got some chilly temperatures out there this morning, but a warm-up on the way when we can make a run to 60 in the next half hour. Potholes causing tire troubles. Metis Lee joining us live this morning to pinpoint where those trouble spots are, what's being done to fix them, plus what you can do to protect your car and expensive repairs. And we're off to a chilly start this morning across green country. What we can expect by the time we get into your afternoon plans in just a moment. And protecting pets, the legislation that could make dog breeding facilities safer and why one expert says heavier fines could help that happen. Two News Oklahoma Today continues now. You're watching Two News Oklahoma Today. Good morning, Green Country. I'm Corey Duke. I'm Justin Fisher. Very happy to have you with us this morning. Uh, meteorologist Michael Sager standing by with a look at your forecast. Good morning, Michael. What's going on, man? Good morning. One more day to get through, and Friday's going to be here. And we've got uh, a chilly day today, but not too bad if you got any plans to take you out and about. This is the view here from Bailey Medical Center in Owasso on the Wade's RV Weather Camera Network. Everything's been looking good for us so far this morning. Temperatures are cold, low to mid 20s as you're heading out the door. Not a whole lot of wind, but maybe just enough to drop that to windchill down a few degrees colder compared to what we've got with the temperatures and you can see our temperatures compared to yesterday morning lots of us here double digits with how much colder it is compared to this time yesterday so kids at the bus stop this morning definitely will want their coats and probably will still want that heavier jacket or even a coat to this afternoon low to mid 40s for our highs we'll notice a lot more clouds mixing in by midday and into the early afternoon as well but we are going to warm things up to finish out the week but when the next cold front comes in and maybe even gives us a chance for some wintry weather coming up in about 50 minutes. Michael, thank you. Well, several drivers now having to replace their tires after getting a flat from a pothole on the Broken Arrow Expressway. That's located near the Utica exit headed eastbound. Yeah, let's take a live look right now. This is from the BA Expressway at Lewis looking to the west toward Utica. Tunis Oklahoma's Amanda Slee is alive with details on what drivers are dealing with. Amanda, good morning. Good morning, Justin, Corey. Traffic is really picking up. We are on the BA Expressway on the eastbound side, and this is the side where you're going to find that pothole. It's just east behind me near the Utica exit is where that pothole is. It's kind of hard to notice because it's mixed in with other bumps and blemishes on the road. But just last night, five people, at least five people, were affected by that pothole, leaving them with flat tires and having to be towed away even worse since it isn't at an exit it's just past an exit the next one isn't for another mile so that makes things even worse nicole klopp was one of the drivers who was affected she was headed into work when it happened and she's frustrated because this caused her to be late to work it was also a two-hour wait for a tow and now she has to pay a couple hundred dollars for a new tire 
obviously our roads need some major work. I mean, four flat tires in the span of half an hour is not driver's fault. It's obviously road hazard and it's not okay. And this is in an area where ODOT is doing a pavement rehabilitation uh, program. Just looking at this, this is one of uh, just a piece of rock, a piece of the street that my photographer found in the area we're in. This isn't saying this is coming from that pothole, but it's just an example of what we're seeing out here on these roads. So drivers really need to take caution in this area. I'm going to put this down now. Um, we did reach out to ODOT. Officials tell us that the contractor of the construction zone is responsible for surface repairs. They said that they did do some surface repairs to potholes yesterday, but that happened before we got these calls about people hitting this pothole around seven o'clock last night. So there's clearly still some areas that drivers need to be aware of, and it's that pothole is in the left lane, so maybe you drive in the right lane to avoid it and just drive slow and be aware. Amanda Slee, 2 News, Oklahoma. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. It is 634 right now. Oklahomans are mourning the death of one of the first Rosie the Riveters. Marina Menovel has passed away on the 14th of this month. She was born on March 25th, 1922, Wichita, Kansas. According to her obituary, Marina was one of the first nine Rosie the Riveters. Menovelis was a resident of Tulsa. Services will be held tonight at the Nindy Funeral Home, Brookside Chapel. That's at 630. The uh, funeral services, though, will be held at Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church tomorrow morning at 11. Her final resting place will be at the Rose Hill Cemetery. Marina Metavellis was 100 years old. Well, there's a big change coming to the way some Oklahomans feed their families. SNAP emergency allotments will expire nationwide in February. For nearly three years now, people who receive SNAP benefits have also been getting a little something extra above their normal amount. The emergency allotments or additional benefits, they normally arrive later in the month. Normal SNAP benefits are typically loaded onto an electronic benefits transfer card at the beginning of the month. Well, in fiscal year 2022, more than 408,000 families received SNAP benefits. The average benefit was $7.07 per person per day or $2.36 per meal. Oklahomans are encouraged to plan now for benefits they had before the pandemic. Oklahoma Human Services, or DHS, says it wants to give families as much time as possible to prepare for the upcoming change in benefits. And looking into this a little further, I wanted to see exactly what this would require of those who do receive those benefits. According to you, OKDHS OK website, you don't need to do anything. However, if this change will greatly impact your current status, DHS is sharing local food resources to help your family. And if you need to check your SNAP benefit balance, you can call 1-888-328-6511 or visit connectebt.com. Well, an area man is headed to the Super Bowl two weeks from Sunday, and it's a first for the Cherokee Nation. We'll explain in four minutes. And looking for ways to get better sleep? When you join us tonight at 10, the Problem Solvers bring us Consumer Reports tips for getting a better night's rest. And our play of the day, it's really several plays, actually, by point guard Damian Lillard, who dropped 60 points on the Jazz last night. It was just one point shy of his career high. Willer also passed Vince Carter for sixth all-time on the NBA three-point shooting list. Dame Dola, player of the day. Hey, good morning, everybody. He may have sprained an ankle in last week's win over the Jacksonville Jaguars, but Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes still showed up to practice on Wednesday. Mahomes says he is ready to go for the Chiefs' AFC Championship matchup with the Bengals. It's doing good. You know, I've got a few days of treatment, a few days of rehab. Uh, excited to get on the practice field and kind of test it out uh, and uh, see where I'm at, but uh, it's feeling good so far. The next few days has just kind of been, I mean, all day thing where you're just doing either treatment or rehab or watching film. And uh, it's a full day thing where you're trying to make sure that you're obviously prepared for the Bengals and the great football team uh, mentally and physically. Yeah, we've all been there. That's hard to watch. Uh, but while he still needs to earn that honor again, a green country man will be at the Super Bowl. Jared Phillips lives in Jay, but next month he is going to be on the national stage. Phillips is the first Cherokee Nation citizen picked to referee the Super Bowl. His family and community telling two news they are proud of him, and we are, right? And cannot wait to see him suit up in black and white on February 12th. So congratulations to him to, to know that. It's going to be a fun time. I mean, that is show. amazing. Yeah. Green country on the national stage, representing. Go. That's awesome.
Well, get this, Trey Young, he put up 33 points in last night's Hawks victory over the Thunder. Thunder fans, they cheered on Young when he was announced with the Atlanta starters and he gave them a show. Other notable scores from last night's game. SGA scored 36 points and Jalen Williams added 24 for the Thunder. Hawks win though, 137 to 132. So close. Switching though to college women's hoops, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane hosted the first place South Florida Bulls last night at Reynolds Center. The TU women trying to knock off a nationally ranked team for the first time ever. So Popa native Tamira Poindexter scored a team high 17 points. Bixby's Manny Biddle scored an additional 14. The Bulls pulled away in the second half to win and solidified its hold on first place 89-68 the final. Economic forecaster is expecting a strong fourth quarter ahead of today's announcement on the GDP. We'll have a preview in just three minutes. I'm Joe St. George in Washington. Should Congress be doing more to protect animals and dogs in our country? Some certainly think so. We break down the numbers and why new regulations could get passed this year next. Hey, temperatures this morning off to a cold and chilly start. How about 18 degrees right now in Hominy? When we'll have our next chance of wintry weather moving into green country coming up here in about five minutes. Welcome back. Time right now is 6.44. Taking a live look outside. It's a chilly morning, but do we have a warm-up? Meteorologist Michael Sager is going to have the details here in just a couple minutes. But before we get to that, let's check out your top stories from around the world. The lawyer for Abigail Zwinner, the first grade teacher shot by a six-year-old student, announcing that she intends to sue the Newport News School District. Now, the attorney alleges that three teachers went to the school administration about the boy's behavior and that he was believed to have had a gun on campus. The school district citing an ongoing investigation declined to comment on the statements from her attorney but confirmed the assistant principal at Richneck Elementary has resigned. Economists expect today's GDP report to show slowing growth. They expect the GDP report to show growth of 2.8% which would be down from 3.2% from the previous quarter. Some experts say the slowing growth is the result of rising interest rates. And senators from both parties are demanding to see classified documents recovered from President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. Members of the Senate Intelligence Committee threatened to bring the chamber's business to a standstill until that happens. Well, the National Archives is considering sending letters former U.S. presidents and vice presidents to make sure they don't have any classified documents. Covering the Capitol, should the federal government take steps to increase its inspections of dog breeding facilities? Well, some animal rights advocates are saying that Congress should make changes to current laws to make federal fines bigger, inspections more frequent. 2 News Oklahoma's Joe St. George joins us from Washington with a look at the push to protect more dogs. And we do want to warn you, some of these images, they may be tough to watch. Having a dog is, well, a lot. Yes, a lot of cleanups. Very humbling. And training. Sit. But a lot of fun. Good boy. Well, if you haven't caught on by now, this is my dog, Tucker, a golden retriever. And while my wife and I think we've given him a pretty good life, the reality is that not every dog is as lucky. And the question is, should our government be doing more? to protect dogs. For decades, we've had this problem. Ingrid Segerman certainly thinks so. She's a lobbyist with the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, or the ASPCA. Specifically, she wants Congress to compel the Department of Agriculture, which inspects dog breeding facilities, to inspect and fine breeders more for violations. They basically have this program of inaction. They're hardly ever issuing fines. We didn't just take her word for it. We looked at the public records, which you can too at U.S. USDA.gov. Last year, there were only 11 administrative actions by the agency involving breeders. And while some fines were issued, this one's for over 12 grand. Some were just warnings. This is just an official warning. The ASPCA says it would be nice to believe that more dogs are getting treated like Tucker in our country, and that's why violations are low. Sadly, she doesn't believe that. More fines are needed, she says, to keep more dogs happy. Minimal fines just don't work. It doesn't have a deterring effect. It doesn't actually deter that facility from violating the law again. And that's where the Goldies Act comes in. We want to warn you, these next images are tough to watch. The act is named after this unnamed, malnourished golden retriever in Iowa. It took 18 visits and six months for the owner of this facility to have his license suspended by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This precious pup eventually had to be put down. 
Goldie's act would order the agency to inspect more and impose stronger penalties. A bipartisan coalition in Congress is expected to try and include it in this year's Farm Bill, legislation that happens every five years and often makes policy changes at the USDA. It would basically make the USDA do its job. As for the Department of Agriculture, we did reach out to them for an interview. They would only give us a statement that said in part that they take the welfare of animals very seriously and noted that they are already inspecting and fining animal owners after investigations. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Let's turn now to your weather headlines with meteorologist Michael Sager. Hey, we've got a chilly start out there this morning as you're heading out the door. A lot of us are down to the low to mid 20s, even 18 degrees at last check in Hominy, but a warm up as we finish out the week. I think today's temperatures will actually be very similar to what we had yesterday, but we'll notice that jump in temperatures tomorrow and especially into Saturday. But then a cold front comes in Saturday night and we're going to drop the temperatures as we go into Sunday. And with that cold air in place, perhaps some wintry weather to contend with as we go into early next week. A tale of two seasons, though, for your weekend. If you've got any plans to take you outside Saturday, that is the day. Now it'll be windy with a gusty south to southwest breeze, but that should push temperatures up close to 60 degrees. And then we'll have a strong north wind on Sunday behind the cold front that comes in on Saturday night, and that will give us a much colder finish to the weekend. Maybe get a couple showers as our front moves in Saturday evening, Saturday night into very early Sunday morning, but I don't think it'd amount to a whole lot if we even see it at all. How about the views this morning? Let me get out of the way here. Look at the colors there at around uh, Shangri-La Resort and Grand Lake. Is that not beautiful right there? How about that? Clear skies at the moment. We do have some clouds approaching us uh, from uh, Kansas, so I would not be surprised if we had some clouds roll in later on this morning and through parts of the afternoon, but uh, not anticipating uh, overcast skies by any means, but we'll have a little bit of sunshine uh, mixing through. And notice not much wind out there this morning either, so that's good news. You don't have much of a windshield to worry about as you're heading out the door this morning. But we'll watch those clouds mixing through here, especially across northern portions of the region as we go through through the uh, uh, afternoon time frame, temperatures into the low to mid 40s for our highs. Maybe a little cooler north and east where that cloud cover might be a bit thicker. And then we'll clear things out tonight. Temperatures tomorrow morning will start out in the 30s. Model probably a little too warm with this. I think we'll be closer to freezing, if not even a little bit below freezing. And then temperatures of tomorrow afternoon up into the 50s. We mentioned that near 60 on Saturday. Keeping an eye on Monday and Tuesday of next week. It's a little too early to know exactly how this will play out, but it does look like we may have a chance for us a wintry mix into early next week. Let's get a look at traffic as you're heading out the door uh, this morning, and let's zoom in just a little bit closer. It looks like we've got an accident showing up here right along Memorial Drive near 46th Street, and there was earlier a uh, li little bit slower there northbound on Memorial between 51st and 46th, so it looks like that has improved just a bit, so uh, hopefully uh, things will continue to uh, uh, look good there. Sky took to downtown 20 minutes, the pulp to downtown 16 minutes, Tulsa Hills to downtown 8 minutes. All right, Michael, thank you. Let's get your news to go now. Today, Fire Station 2 and Jinx in the police department holding a safe kids car seat checkup. It's a perfect opportunity for new and expecting parents to have their car seats properly installed before taking their newborns home from the hospital. Safe kids certified firefighters or police officers, they'll be on hand. And it's not just for new parents. Anyone can go get their car seat checked. That's today from 10 to noon. And certified officers can help you in any time, really, installing a car seat. All you have to do is call 918-299-6311 to get an appointment. Today is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, marking 78 years since the liberation of Auschwitz. Second gentleman, Doug Inhofe, the first Jewish spouse of a U.S. president or vice president, will travel to Poland and Germany to observe the day. A similar celebration will be held tonight from 530 to 730 at Helmut Hall on the University of Tulsa campus. Also today, U.S. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona will visit with students and tribal leaders in Oklahoma City. He'll visit a career and technical program as well as the Riverside Indian School in Anadarko. Well, today is a special day for spouses. How you can share what that special bond means to you with the rest of the world. Coming up, we've been talking a lot about how people are turning to the diabetes drug Ozempic to lose weight. Well, now there are concerns over a possible side effect. It's being called Ozempic Face. We will explain what it is and what to do about it later on today. Well, an asteroid is about to make a really close encounter with Earth, potentially one of the closest yet. Nothing to worry about, though. There is no risk of the asteroid dubbed 2023 BU impacting our planet. It Not is, at all. Uh, that's good, right? It's estimated to be about the size of a box truck, so that wouldn't be fun. It's going to zoom over the 
southern tip of South America, 2,200 miles above the Earth's surface. It is expected to turn into a fireball disintegrate harmlessly into the atmosphere if it does get that close. And here's the thing, the asteroid was actually discovered by an amateur astronomer out of his observatory in Crimea last September. Well, if you are married, hopefully you celebrate your spouse every day of the year, but Thursday, it offers an opportunity for extra celebration because it is National Spouses Day today, observed every year on January 26th. And to mark the day, you can get on social media, tell the world how much you value your special bond, and use hashtag National Spouses Day. According to nationaldaycalendar.com, National Spouses Day, that's been observed since 1984. So many years of honoring love and Hugs commitment. All, <laughs> yeah. After years of rumors and speculation, some commitment finally on this one. Agent 007 finally coming back to gaming systems. GoldenEye 007 will be available to certain systems. Xbox, Game Pass, and Nintendo Switch online expansion pack subscribers. Say that real quick. The classic first-person shooter is widely noted as one of the most influential and ex uh, evolutionary FPS games ever. Uh, created originally released in 1997 for the Nintendo 64, it'll now be available to play on Nintendo Switch, Xbox, Pixelated Pierce Brosnan, back in action this Friday. I know a lot of people are gonna be pretty excited about that. Like we were talking about earlier, if you played it at the time, probably never finished it, because all the multiplayer was much more fun. But yeah, for those who are excited to play it again, there you go. Do you, do you remember playing this and like if you if your character would like die, you were like the screen would just like go down in red? Yeah. And you were just like, oh, and then it would start back up. You're like, yeah. well, here I go again. Here we and go th again. Th this is the game that never ends. The game that never ends. <laughs> the chilly weather, Michael. Maybe a little bit later. Yeah, we've got, uh, again, uh, chilly weather right now, but we're going to warm things up as we finish out the week. But for your plans today, still some chill out there, but I'm loving this warm what? sunrise here at Shangri-La Resort Grand Lake. Is that not nice right there? Amazing colors here to start out your Thursday morning. Temperature-wise, it is cold, though. A lot of us are down into the low to mid-20s. Uh, earlier, we were down to 18 degrees in Hominy, so there are a handful of spots out there. They've dropped down into the upper teens and just got the update now in Bartlesville at 19 degrees. So again, there is some chill to be found out there. Heading out today, we're going to keep things again running below average. Our average high would be right about 50 degrees. We're going to hold it probably low to mid 40s this afternoon across the area. We'll notice more clouds mixing in as we go through later in the morning and midday and into the afternoon, but still some sunshine peeking through, uh, peeking through as well. So if you are heading out and about, that coat will come in handy this morning. You'll probably still want something to keep you warm this afternoon. But uh, tomorrow, some 50s might make a run to 60 on Saturday and then it'll take a, a little uh, more work and fine tuning, but potential for some wintry weather in the early next week that could be impactful. So uh, just stay tuned as we uh, continue to update that. Why does this happen? We always get like 60 degrees and then bam, cold. Bam. God.